what's up everybody and welcome back to the pennsylvania and berwin today we're going to be doing some work on reitz salvage up here in highland and this is the last industry that we have to complete up here in highland and i'm just going to state the obvious here in case you didn't notice it we are now in trains 2019 and I know there's going to be a lot of mixed opinions on this, but I decided to move the P&B into Trains 2019 going forward. And I had to do it just for my own mental uh, stamina of getting this project done. I really wanted to be able to start operating trains a little bit more easily while I'm still building. And 19, because it's got the driver and the surveyor uh, combined, whatever you call it, combined surveyor driver, uh, it allows me to be able to run some trains in between when I'm doing some building. and. Uh, allow me to kind of get a, an operating session started and to continue running it and that's something that I just need to do in order to stay interested in this project because this has been a long long project I'm kind of used to banging out some of my routes in you know a matter of weeks or a couple of months and this has just been going on for a really long time so uh, I did it as a matter of keeping myself interested in it and uh, I'm sure a lot of people are gonna have something to say about it but the good news is phase one uh, will eventually be re-released with all of the updates uh, for Tane and included in Trains 2019. So uh, I've got a friend of mine who's helping me do some updates to the Phase 1 section. Uh, you can find some screenshots of that on my Discord and possibly on the forums and other places, but definitely on my Discord. Um, so if you're looking for some, some of those, uh, you could check that out. But yes, the uh, Phase 1 section will be released in Tane eventually and the rest will be released in 19. I'm not gonna move to 2022 yet uh, because I'm just getting acclimated to Trains 2019. And to be perfectly honest with you, Trains 2019 has been pretty good to me so far, but it does have some, some quirkiness, which I'll talk about in a moment here. Uh, but so far, it's been a pretty decent transition. I didn't have a whole lot of problems uh, porting in assets or anything like that or any of my dependencies for the PNB. There's a few things here and there that have issues because they're payware active or payware or packaged, whatever any of that means. I have no idea. I'm still trying to decipher uh, what some of these new 2019 tags actually mean. Uh, but so far, it seems to be okay. My biggest issue with 2019 so far is really in its performance. Uh, where on average it performs pretty well. Uh, it actually performs better than Tane for me. However, there are times where driver seems to operate a little bit better than surveyor, and I have to switch between driver and surveyor a few times before surveyor starts to smoothen out. Uh, and I am using the latest uh, service pack, which I believe is service pack five, and uh, I am having that issue. So I don't know if that's something that's pretty common for everybody or if it's just because of how I ported my assets in or, or what, I have absolutely no idea. But other than that, uh, it's been pretty good. Um, one thing I want to point out with the route itself and porting it into 19 is that I'm still working on the environmental settings. They are very, very different in 19 compared to Tane. Um, I'm trying to achieve the same look that we had in the Tane version in 19, but because 19 has such a high contrast to it, it's a little bit more difficult to do. So certain areas will look a little bit brighter than others and other areas will look darker than others. And I'm just trying to work out how the, the time of day is gonna look, what the coloring is gonna look like and that kind of thing. So you'll see me transition through that a few times throughout this video and open up the environmental settings tab and kind of mess with things. Cause it seems like every time I get it to where I like it, I pause the game and then I leave and I come back 20 minutes later and do some more work and suddenly it looks different. So I wanna go back and tweak it again. So I've been tweaking a lot with the environmental settings and eventually I'll, I'm sure I'll land on something. I'm trying to copy what I did for the Hudson and Western and uh, I think the WKNS. Uh, I think those had some pretty decent lighting settings. So I'm trying to, you know, copy that a little bit. But uh, again, still fine tuning that sort of thing. So anyway, in today's build video here, uh, we're working on REITs salvage. Uh, this is on the opposite end. I don't even know if we're facing north, south, east, or west, or what. But we're on the opposite end of uh, uh, opposite side of Highland here. And um, th like I said, this is going to be the last industry that we have to do up here. There's still some uh, surrounding infrastructure and buildings that I need to do. Um, I haven't decided if I'll do that entirely off camera or if I'll do that during a live stream. What I'm kind of thinking is that the ne next episode of the PMB is going to be episode 50. And I was thinking maybe doing a longer episode for that will, where we'll maybe go around from, you know, all the different sections that need some work and do a little bit here and there and uh, sort of finish off some areas or just sort of touch up things. Because I've kind of realized for myself that lately, at least, uh, I want to jump around a little bit. It's it's a little bit harder for me to focus on one 
uh, specific build area and, and build it to completion, which is kind of a change because that used to be how I worked best was to, you know, pick one section and then just do it until it's done and then move on to something else. But I found that recently I'm just getting burned out and I need to, to jump around a little bit. Um, but speaking of burnout, thankfully, there are two other scrapyards on the P&B, and I've been able to copy and paste a lot of those assets from those other scrapyards into here. And that's uh, sort of cheaty, but at the same time, like, I'm not going to go digging through every asset in the game and start looking for, you know, new derelict buildings and, you know, scrap whatever, you know, to, to populate my scrapyards with. I've already built two or three of them. You know, why not just use some of the assets that I have? It'll also reduce the overall uh, asset library for the PNB, which is absolutely like staggeringly huge right now. When I ported this into 19, I was blown away by how many assets I had to download or install. I want to say it was like 5,000, 6,000, something like really ridiculous. So this is definitely not a small map in terms of its uh, asset footprint. So any chance that I get that I can kind of reuse things and, and minimize that footprint or just not really minimize that it's a little past that point, but prevent it from getting any bigger than it already is uh, would be helpful. Uh, so anyway, you'll see me copy and paste from a few different areas on the PNB into here a few times. And uh, luckily, you know, I, I reorganize things, so it's not a direct, you know, stamp out or anything like that. Um, but a lot of those assets will be reused. And uh, I, I think the effect is still good. It's you're going to use, you know, the same junk assets anyway. So, you know, why, why try to reinvent the wheel? Uh, so anyway, obviously I gotta bring in some ground texturing here in terms of scrapyards. I, I think that that's probably the best way to get an overall dirty appearance and uh, junky appearance to a lot of these scrapyards is really just with texturing and good ter terraforming, uh, adding hills and piles of garbage and then using textures to uh, add that garbage. And then a few 3D assets here and there to, to kind of round it out and add some dimension to those uh, terrain piles and textures and that sort of thing. So that's what I did a lot here, and uh, I'm working pretty fast on this build for some reason, uh, which is funny because I started this video like probably two months ago at this point. It's been a while. It's been a long time in the making because I just haven't had the time to, to sink a lot of time into it. It's been like 20 minutes here and there. Uh, so anyway, uh, it took a little while for me to get this put together, but uh, overall, I'm happy with how Highland is turning out, which uh, I'll direct my attention to that in a, in a few moments here. But uh, the whole area just feels like lively. Like once I start adding traffic on the roads and, uh, and that sort of thing, like the place is really going to feel like a real town uh, or the real outskirts of a, a bigger city. And I really like that. I'm pretty excited for it. It's going to be a lot of fun to uh, bring trains up here and do some switching and, and that kind of thing. So uh, it's coming together pretty good. Uh, at this point, I'm adding a wigwag crossing here because according to the original uh, P&B paperwork, uh, it says the, the Sperta Reitz has the railroad's only wigwag crossing signal that protects the railroad crossing of the highway in front of the plant. So uh, I had to add that in there. These are wigwags from Reggie's Train, which uh, sadly is uh, no longer, I think, active. I'm not sure what's going on with Reggie's Train's website right now, but uh, I think somebody told me that the page has been taken down or is... Uh, in hiatus or something like that but i'm sure somebody will leave me a comment in, in this video and let me know what's going on but uh those wigwags are from reggie's trains i believe they were payware uh they're quite ni nice assets that i intended to use here and uh, i think it helps complete the scene quite a bit because this is sort of supposed to be a bit of uh I, I don't want to use the term abandoned and i don't want to use the term less used track because this is a pretty busy complex here i've got three spurs in there so it's not a uh, small action uh, facility um, by any means, but I, I guess it's, I wanna show its age really is what I'm trying to go for with that. It's just keeping the age and some history with that. And uh, that kind of adds to the lore. And for me, it adds a little bit of, uh, you know, immersion to it. And that's what I'm all about when it comes to this sort of thing is the amount of immersion. <laughs> By the way, you'll have to excuse me, this is the middle of May right now, and my allergies are at, like, an 11, so I'm absolutely dying, and uh, it's I've been trying to <laughs> record this voiceover for a little bit, and my voice has just been so bad, uh, so you'll have to forgive me, but I, I needed to get this done and get it out. Uh, so anyway, we're working our way around the plant here. Oh, by the way, so Reach Salvage, this uh, is inbound scrap that is supposedly supposed to be coming from uh, Horners up in Vani. So we'll have a little bit of an online industry back and forth there. Um, there is a new, uh, there is a new 
uh, scrap plant over in uh, Junietta. I have yet to determine if it's inbound or outbound scrap, but in any case, there is another scrap yard over in the phase one section that's been added. Uh, so we'll have a lot of scrap traffic on here, which excites me a lot because uh, I love gondolas and I love open top, top loads or uh, uh, freight cars. Uh, so I'm excited to see that sort of stuff. I, I love the uh, uh, with gondolas. They just get so beat up and so weathered, and I just love the look of that. So uh, this is going to be a lot of fun to switch out, I think, especially since I added a few extra tracks, as you can see here. It's uh, definitely going to be a pretty decent facility. What do I count here? Four, eight, nine, ten, like 10 or 12 cars can go in here. So uh, definitely going to be busy, and uh, that that's going to be a lot of fun, especially with the brewery plant there and uh we got the oil facility and all of that like this is going to be just such a busy area we might have to add we might have to annotate the uh the actual uh, operating scheme here and maybe add a couple more trains to uh get the area functioning properly uh, and those are things that i'll figure out once i start doing operating sessions uh which i hope to do pretty soon um maybe sometime over the summer or getting into the fall i will definitely be introducing some kind of live stream uh operating session maybe once a month or something like that have to figure out the logistics of that uh i have this bad tendency to over promise and under deliver at this point where i just have this idea in my head that i've got more time available than than i actually do and it's it's just been really tough to deal with uh so anyway i'm trying to fill out the background area of uh behind the, the this uh, uh scrap yard here and uh, I thought like a strip mall, a, you know, fast food chain, you know, like a retail whatever road uh, would be pretty appropriate for this. But as I started to do it, I got really, really bored building it. And I kind of realized that you guys wouldn't want to see the whole thing. So I cut this up a little bit and I also don't really finish this area entirely because uh, there's just no way I'm going to sit and do parking lots and all that kind of stuff right now, especially for a background scene. So. I'll eventually get to it, but right now I was like, you know what? No, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I've had enough abuse. So I do a little bit of work on camera here with the roads just to give you an idea of uh, what I had going on. Uh, again, really loving these road markings uh, from uh, from Felix. And uh, this is definitely like a great use of, of this sort of stuff to create these larger highways. Uh, I don't even know if this would be considered a highway. Maybe it's a boulevard. I'm not sure the proper terminology here, but... Uh, uh, I, I think, you know, being able to have turning lanes and straight lanes and stuff like that, even though this is a background scene for me, again, it adds to that sort of immersion and it makes the area feel much bigger than sort of like, you know, a model railroad that, that ends at the backdrop or begins at the fascia. You know, you're, you're getting more depth to your scenes and it makes them a little bit more lively, especially like if you could imagine once I start getting some traffic down on here, uh, how crazy and busy it's gonna look. So I'm, I'm pretty pumped about that. Again, that's gonna be a detail that I work in later. Um, but at this point, we're getting to the last couple of clips here. Again, this is kind of a shorter video, but you get a bit of an overview of the Highland area uh, and how it's developing. I'll have to uh, add some of that into the cinematics at the end here. Uh, but I'm just trying to work in a few last minute details, uh, some power lines. In a moment, you'll see me bring in some, uh, some trees and some landscaping to break up these parking lot medians. Uh, and again, these parking lots, I sort of just copied and pasted them. Um, I need to bring in some textures to, you know, oil spills and cracks and that sort of thing. Uh, because that plain gr gray asphalt texture is just, it's plain and gray. Let's, let's just be honest. So you got to work in some different textures like I'm doing here. Uh, that helps to add some highlights and lowlights and just overall texture to the whole scene. Uh, so that makes a huge difference. But again, I do this really roughly because by this point, <laughs> it was two months into making this video and I was really getting bored with this area. So I kind of just went over it really quick. Um, but here's a nice high high view that you can kind of see how the background area has developed here. Main line off to the side there on the left. Um, and we've got our oil complex off to the left there and the brewery would be just behind that. So again, very cool stuff. It's funny as I'm building this, I see a lot of things that I've learned uh, from my other routes. Uh, the uh, North Carolina Transportation Museum in particular for this uh, specific highway or, or boulevard that I was working on here. It, it reminds me a lot of uh, a section of the NCTM. And uh, I've been working on a lot of farmland stuff during uh, Patreon live streams and hangouts. And uh, that reminds me a lot of the WKNS. So all of those projects that I've done over the past couple of years have been sort of learning experiences, you know, that I'm taking little bits of those and bringing them into the P&B. And 
you know, it makes those projects much more worthwhile to have completed because I learned something, you know, I learned how to, you know, develop a scene a little bit differently or how to copy and paste things without them being too, uh, you know, checkerboarded or anything like that. So, uh, real important lessons, you know, it's really good to go out and do other projects in between your main focus because it, it kind of teaches you stuff and it helps you, uh, helps develop your skills and that sort of thing. So, uh, I will say that that was definitely a worthwhile venture. So this is the last clip here before we get into the cinematics. Uh, again, I'm just trying to work in some really rough texturing and uh, I'll come back and, and, you know, blend it together a little bit better and, uh, and tune it up a little bit. And eventually I'll add parked cars and all those other kind of detail things. Uh, but until then, this is how we're going to we're going to end it. So with that, I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I know this has been quite a long slog in terms of, uh, I mean, it's been like three months since my last video, so I have to apologize to you guys about that. I used to do videos every week, but anyway, here we are. That's life. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're looking forward to uh, seeing more, and I'll see you guys in the next one.